Hi, I'm Fabian Yakov. This presentation is entitled Transformer Saturation and Gap Core Current Transformer. Let me say a few words about the background of this presentation. In a recent LinkedIn post, I've seen a statement or a question, how does a gap core transformer help combat core saturation? So in this presentation, we're going to clarify this whole issue and also to explain what is a gap core current transformer, which seems to be like a different kind of a beast. So let me start off with nonlinear behavior of ferromagnetic material and saturation. Now the BH curve, the magnetic flux density against the magnetic field, in practical material, ferromagnetic material, is nonlinear. I'm showing here that this is nonlinear and also I'm showing here a hysteresis. Now the hysteresis is really related to losses and it is not important to the subject matter we are discussing here. So I'm going to refer to an average curve here, BH curve, which is non-linear of course, but it doesn't have hysteresis, to, just to simplify matter, make it simpler to understand. And what we see here is that around the zero we have a sort of a linear portion here, and then it starts to curve, so it's becoming non-linear, and then eventually sort of saturate. Now the slope here is the permeability, which in general is of course the vacuum or air permeability times the relative permeability. Now, relative permeability in practical ferromagnetic materials like steel or silicon steel and ferrite is very high, it's in around the thousands. So therefore, this slope is very steep, okay? And then, of course, the permeability is becoming smaller and smaller until the material saturates. Now, as an introduction, let, let me start with an inductor. Now, if you have a core in which there are a number of turns, this is an inductor. We see here an inductance, and if I feed a current to it, then of course it builds up a magnetic field, and uh, according to Ampere's law, the Ni is equal to H magnetic field times the magnetic path length. This is the magnetic path length, and I can relate then B to I, since H is a function of I, and therefore the magnetic flux density is the mu, total mu, times Ni over Le. So B of the inductor is a function of the current. The higher the current, the higher the B. And since mu sub R of ferromagnetic material, as I've said, is very high, then very quickly I'm going to get into saturation. That is, with fairly little current, I'm going to already get here because this is a very steep slope here due to the fact that the relative permeability is very high. Now in power inductors we do need to have current because we want to store energy in an inductor. So therefore we have to somehow allow a higher current to get in and this is done by having a gap, okay, an air gap within the core such that the permeability of the, of the air is of course much lower because the relative permeability is 1. So we have a higher permeability here and a lower here, and it can be shown, and I'm not going to develop this, uh, develop the equation, they are given in a number of uh, videos in my YouTube channel. It can be shown that the relative permeability of this body for small gaps is approximately the length of this core here divided by the length of the air gap, okay? So this is the permeability. And of course, uh, it can be much lower or it will be much lower than the permeability of the ferromagnetic material itself. Now this is pretty constant. So therefore, what we have done here is rather than having this BH curve, which is sort of non-linear and gets uh, quickly into the saturation region, we have now a fairly steady constant permeability until we reach the B saturation. Now, B saturation is an absolute value. I mean, it's not something you can change. It has to do with the material. And when you get to it, the material gets into saturation. But the point is that if you have a gap, you can have a higher current because without a gap, if you have this current or this uh, magnetic field related to a certain current, you get to this B value. Now, you can if you have a gap, you get to this B value with a much higher current. 
So the gap allows having a much higher current in an inductor by lowering the permeability and actually linearizing this section here. Now I'm turning to the subject matter which is uh, under discussion, a transformer. Now a transformer has at least two windings, maybe more. There is an input and output or there's one side and another side. And then we have a current and a voltage on each side. It is terminated by a load. Well, you can have a transformer open circuit that is without a load and you can look at here, but then it will be just an inductor, okay? So a transformer means that you have a current here and a current here, and then we know that there is a relationship between this current which is dependent on the turns ratio, and of course the voltages are also related by the turns ratio. Now it is very important to realize the transformer does not store energy. All the energy coming in is immediately coming out. IN1, IN2 are related one to one and they are actually canceling each other so that uh, there is no extra current above this balance. There is, however, some reactive current due to the fact that if you look at the input, say, without having an output, you see an inductor. We call it the magnetization inductance. And of course, there will be some current. And usually in a practical transformer, uh, this inductance is fairly high and the current is a small fraction of the current that is actually passing from input to output. So let me just summarize that a transformer does not store energy and that the currents are balanced. Now if I have a voltage feeding the transformer and then a load, of course I'm going to have the voltage here and then the reflected voltage and the output according to the transfer ratio and current here and current here as I discussed earlier. And this voltage will of course invoke a flux within the core and the relationship between the voltage and the flux is given by the Faraday law. Now V is N dV dt, V is the flux, and we can relate it to the flux density by this relationship. And therefore, the magnetic flux density is related to the voltage by this integral. And then it comes out to be V maximum of the voltage here, divided by two pi F N number of turns A, and cos omega t. So B is related to the voltage and the frequency. For a given voltage, if you lower the frequency, B will be coming higher, okay? So the term which is important is the voltage over frequency. So for a given voltage over frequency, you have a certain magnetic flux density, and obviously if this term becomes larger and larger, you'll get into saturation because again, saturation is when B is reaching the value of B saturation of the particular material. Now, what will happen if you will put a gap? Well, if you will put a gap, then nothing actually changes. Everything is the same. And the Faraday law still holds, this equation holds, and B is still a function of the voltage and frequency. So nothing has changed. What will happen, however, is that the magnetization inductance will be smaller because now with the gap, we have a lower permeability or relative permeability and therefore the inductance will be smaller and the current here circulating in this path will be larger. But as far as saturation, things have not changed because this is determining the relationship between B in fact and the voltage. And once this relationship is given, then it doesn't matter whether there is a gap or not. So saturation of a transformer is a function of the voltage, or you might say the factor of voltage over frequency. This is what is determining saturation of a transformer. You cannot change it by a gap. Now what about the current transformer? In a current transformer, we are not feeding a voltage here to the primary, or rather a current. Now, N1 could be in fact one turn, like a wire coming in and out, and then N2 will be a larger number. So the current coming in is then transferred to the output according to the 
turns ratio. Of course, if this is 1 and this is n larger than 1, then this current is smaller. And then this current is passing through this load, through the resistor, developing a voltage which is proportional to the input current. Okay, so the voltage at the output will be the current times this turns ratio times RL. Okay. Now, again, we do have here also a magnetization inductance. I'm showing here the primary. You can show it as a secondary. And there is some current here. And, of course, if this is the current transformer, you are interested in a good relationship between the input and output, a tight relationship, then uh, you will design it such that uh, this current will be relatively small uh, by design. Now, what about saturation? Well, what we call saturation is the voltage, because the voltage is related to the magnetic flux density. So, as you pump in higher and higher current, the voltage goes up, and this is exactly like having, say, a voltage source here, it doesn't matter, okay? You impose a voltage here by the sheer fact that you have a current passing through the resistor, and once you go, go to a high enough voltage, depending on the frequency, of course, then the core will go into saturation, exactly like we've seen it before. Only that the process is a bit different. That is, we don't have a voltage source, we have a current, which is developing a voltage that is causing saturation. So this is the basic works of a current transformer. However, if the voltage is starting to rise, it depends on the magnitude of the current and, of course, the value of the resistance. If the voltage is starting to rise, then you will go into nonlinearity of the BH curve. So you'll, and this means that this inductance is becoming smaller and smaller, so a higher and higher current is passing here. So you break the relationship between the input and output current or input current and output voltage, I should say, and eventually it will go into saturation, okay? So there is a problem that if you like to have a very high current, you'll get in, you might get into the nonlinear section or area or range and then eventually go into saturation. So in this case, we can actually put a gap. So let's see what is this gap is actually doing in a current transformer. And now I've sort of reflected all the parasitic elements like the magnetization inductance and leakages to the secondary because here usually it will be one turn and the value will be very small so it's really uh, more practical to reflect it to the secondary. So what will happen here is as we have a gap this inductance is smaller and therefore the relationship between the input current and the voltage across RL is a function of how much current is passing here. Okay, So I'm actually paralleling our load with a fairly low impedance so that what we have now is a load that, look, that looks like that. And the output voltage now is the input current times the Terence ratio, of course, times this impedance. So first of all, there's going to be a phase shift. Secondly, the magnitude will be dependent also on the frequency because uh, the impedance is a function of the frequency because we have an inductor here. So this really is good for one frequency. Uh, like a, in a line frequency and certainly not for any waveform of a current or pulses because if you have a pulse here then it's going to be a big problem with this inductor. So therefore it is limited for one frequency because with another frequency the Z, the impedance is different and the ratio will be different. So it's for one frequency and sinusoidal waveform and if you have a large content of harmonic there might be a problem here, so it's rather limited. However, what it is doing is two things. First of all, it's linearizing the response because with a gap, we know that the BH curve is becoming linear, so we have linearity over a larger range. This is number one. And number two, it's actually lowering the impedance 
and therefore uh, the voltage will be actually lower and therefore you can pump in higher current. So the gapped core current transformer is, you might say, an inductor. It's not a transformer anymore. And in fact, from the functional point of view, what we are doing here is that we are passing a current through an inductor, which is gapped, so therefore it will accommodate a higher current because of the lower permeability, and we measure the voltage across this inductor. Now, uh, this arrangement is not good for two reasons. Number one, the impedance here is going to be high, and therefore uh, it will sort of uh, disturb the circuit that I'm going to measure. Secondly, it doesn't have isolation. So in fact, the current transformer is doing the same thing, except that it provides isolation, and then a turns ratio which makes the impedance when you look at the primary much lower because it is reflected to the primary by this ratio, okay? Z times turns ratio squared. So therefore, we might say that the gapped core current transformer is really an inductor, which is used to measure current by looking at the voltage across. So what are the conclusions here of this presentation? First of all, saturation of transformer is caused by voltage, not current. I've shown that. And then a gapped core current transformer is in fact an inductor, it should be an, in, an inductor on which the voltage is measured. Now the advantages is that it can handle higher current and it's more linear, but the disadvantages are that for it is suitable for a sinusoidal waveform. It's optimized for one frequency. There is a phase shift between the current and the output voltage, and it's certainly not suitable for measuring pulses. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I hope you found it of interest, and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.